Good morning. Our order of worship this morning is service of prayer and preaching on page 260. Our opening hymn is number 907. We rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us read. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting.
The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Genesis in the third chapter. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman who you gave to, to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. And then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 5. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, <coughs> it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. And so we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent which is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. And then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And Jesus called to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And the crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habit. We speak the parts of the Catechism, beginning with the Ten Commandments. You shall... We confess together the Apostles' Creed. And we pray together, our Father. You may be seated, we sing him 529.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the epistle lesson from 2 Corinthians, which was just read. Maybe you've seen the billboard. A runner crouched ready for the sprint. But in place of their leg, they have this springy attachment. Somehow they had lost their leg. And there's four words on the bill, billboard, lost leg, not heart. Whatever caused the loss of that leg, that person never gave up. They didn't become discouraged and become engrossed in self-pity. They weren't beaten down so that they would give in and lose hope. They did not lose heart. And the Apostle Paul is telling us the same thing in the epistle today, so that we don't lose heart. So no matter what may be going on around us, no matter how much we're going through at the moment, what frailty and failings of our own bodies, maybe our mental capacities, our emotions, we do not lose heart. We don't get discouraged. We don't give up. Paul says, follow me. Follow the word that I give you so that you're not so worn out that you give in. And we might ask, Paul, you know what's going on, don't you? What's going on around us in our own lives, what weighs us down. The burden is heavy, even though you might call it light and momentary. It certainly doesn't feel light and it doesn't seem momentary to us. And what's going on around us? War in various parts of the world. The after effects of COVID still lingering. We become a people at odds with one another. We have difficulty getting back together, finding common ground. We've lost many teachers, many medical personnel who just no longer want to deal with the day in and day out polarization of our country. Inflation hits our pocketbook. Our budgets crumble. It now becomes more difficult to buy milk, eggs, gas. I read somewhere the question, if you pick up the phone to call somebody for help, will anybody answer? The list goes on and on about all the burdens in our society, the weights that weigh us down daily. And if you listen to the news each and every day, you can't help but get a little bit discouraged. We lose hope. And many do lose heart. And that's just what's going on around us. What about what's going on with us? We know our own frailties, our own failures and weaknesses. As we get a little bit older, the joints don't work as well as they did when we were 20. The aches and pains outweigh the joy of work. Maybe we're afraid a family member will go astray. Or it's now time to start taking care of your own parents. There's so much going on in our life. How can we say this is all just a little burden. How can we say that it's momentary when it takes up so much of our time? The answer to those questions comes straight from Paul's heart. 
In 2 Corinthians, Paul is at his most vulnerable. He reveals more about himself, about his own emotions, his own vulnerabilities than any other epistle he's written. At the beginning of 2 Corinthians, he simply says, we are so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. Utterly burdened, beyond our strength, the sentence of death. It sounds almost like Paul is ready to lose heart. And in chapter 4, right before the words of our text, he used words like perplexed, struck down, afflicted, persecuted. His life was one of ridicule. His life is one of imprisonment. He's been run out of town. He's been beaten up, whipped, thrown into jail, shipwrecked, even bitten by a snake. And he knows his own death will be one as a martyr for the faith. So Paul knows the weight. He knows what we're going through today. So how does he not lose hope? It's all because of Christ's resurrection. Also in the first chapter of his letter, he says, We had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. And in our reading today, Paul says, We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For Paul, everything changed when Christ rose from the dead. Paul sees what's going on around him. He accepts it, but he believes firmly in Christ's resurrection. He's on the road to Damascus. His name is Saul. He has letters allowing him to arrest and persecute Christians. He can have them thrown in jail. He wants Christians to be put to death. And then the blinding light comes. The resurrected Christ appears to him on the road. And he calls out, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Paul replies, who are you? to which he has answered, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. It's at that moment that Saul dies and Paul comes to life. That resurrection experience is the basis of and the energy of all that Paul does, all that he writes in his letters. Paul's whole ministry flows out of Christ's resurrection and leads him to say, we do not lose heart. Paul knows what's coming. He knows a day will come, a final day, a day of the resurrection of the dead, the day that Jesus returns. And he knows that as Christ rose from the dead, so will he, and so will we. We will rise with our bodies immortal, imperishable, perfect. We will experience no more tears, no more pain, no more grief, no more failings or frailty. On that day, our bodies will be glorified. And so Paul speaks what his heart believes. That he proclaims what is to come, that the glorifying being in the resurrected Christ far outweighs our light and momentary afflictions so that we don't lose heart. 
Paul believes and he speaks Christ's resurrection to us. Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. So how do we believe this for ourselves? We go to God's Word, where Jesus speaks words of comfort, words of encouragement to us. He tells us to remember your baptism. Remember when Jesus brought you into his eternal family and even now assures you of what's to come on the last day. Step up to the Lord's table. Take that small piece of bread and that sip of wine. It is the very body and blood of Christ himself. In doing so, you are in the presence of the risen Christ at that moment. And he strengthens you so that you do not lose heart. What you see around you, what's happening to you may be real, yes. But what's happening inside of you because of Jesus Christ, even though unseen, is just as real. And so we believe. So we too say we do not lose heart. To help us see what Paul is doing when he compares our light and momentary afflictions with the eternal glory of Jesus' resurrection, picture a balanced scale. We have two sides to that equally balanced scale. On one side, you add all the injustice, the disease, the broken relationships, the grief. And that side sinks down and down. It weighs us down with the burdens of life. But what happens when we add Christ's resurrection to the other side? Suddenly, our burdens are light. They raise back up. Our burdens are taken care of because of Christ's resurrection. And nothing will come close to the glory of being with Jesus for all eternity. All those things that weigh us down will simply be no more. No more broken relationships. No more faltering abilities. No more cancer, diabetes, anxiety. You fill in the blank for what you have because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He promises us that we too will rise. And so yes, a day is coming, a day that far outweighs our light and momentary afflictions. And so we say with Paul that we do not lose heart, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the gathering of the offering.
In our prayers this morning, we remember the family of Clifford Schmidt, who passed away this past Saturday. Visitation will be here in the church tomorrow from 10 to noon, with the service being held at noon tomorrow. Also, we remember Pastor Holman and his family, and uh, Pastor Holman's sister passed away this week. We rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, into whose keeping we entrust our loved ones, help us to look to you in our time of sorrow, remembering the cloud of faithful witnesses with which we are surrounded. Grant that we may one day share in the joys of those who now rest in your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. And finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, your son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we pray together the morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, through your Son, that you
Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Our closing hymn is number 692. Thanks for enduring the liquid sunshine this morning. Uh, VBS starts tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, also, uh, funeral for Clifford Schmidt will be here at noon tomorrow with visitation from 10 to 12, as it says. Have a blessed week. I'll see you in two weeks.